Hello everyone, I'm your host with the most is 8 Second Gaming, and in today's video we are going to be taking a look at one tip for every hero's ultimate ability. There's a lot to learn, so let's jump straight in, but just quickly, if you guys are looking to take your Overwatch skills to the next level, then you need to check out the Game Leap website right now. Over there we have top level coaches, including myself, creating the best, most highly informative guides possible. No matter what you struggle with as a player, you will be able to find a solution, so click the link in the description, pick yourself up a membership, and start to improve today. But okay, with that out of the way, now let's actually hop into stuff, and to start off with, we're gonna go with the tanky boys. And kicking off the tanks, we have Reinhardt. Now, Shatter has the ability to win team fights completely on its own, as leaving the entire enemy team on the floor leaves them quite literally zero counterplay. And one of the best ways to use it is around corners. If you jump and press your Shatter whilst inputting a movement key just before landing, your Shatter will be delayed and you will have the ability to perform a short slide. This can surprise your enemies and help you hit that five man slam to win your team fight. Moving into Wrecking Ball though, deciphering which kind of ultimate you want to use on Hammond is key. You have two options. Ultimate from a fairly high place in the air, which will spread the mines out nicely. This will be great for any open King of the Hill map in overtime situations, or going for regular minefield into pile drive. This will be best for general team fighting, and thanks to his one second mine arm time, the kill threat on minefield has never been higher. Let's go into Junker Queen now, and using your ultimate as Junker Queen leaves you in an animation where you are completely stood still for a second and then you are forced to move forward in an although fast but extremely predictable pattern. Therefore, incorporating a jump to the side while using this alt is an amazing tip as it will make you significantly harder to kill, and also harder to cancel the ultimate. And a little bonus tip is using your ultimate to slide off a wall to get around a corner is also very helpful. Let's go into D.Va now, and a tip that is pretty much never talked about when using D.Va's ultimate is having a good understanding of the current map you're playing on Skybox's height. If you were to booster and immediately ultimate straight up, your ultimate would be too high to hit anyone at all unless you are playing on a map with a low skybox such as Midtown. Otherwise, having a great understanding of how late into your jet boosters you should throw your ult will greatly increase the kill potential that you have. Now for Doomfist. Now Doomfist's ultimate should only be treated as a means of either escaping or waiting for your cooldowns to come back. There are extremely rare exceptions to this rule, but it is a general thing to keep in mind. Your cooldowns are low enough that you may use your ultimate to wait for them to come back. Or if you have no health left, using it to get back to safety of your team is completely fine, especially with the addition of your next punch already being powered up. Let's talk about Winston now, and the Monkey's Primal Rage is one of the hardest ultimates in the game to use. And to find the most value off of it, you have to make sure to really limit test your life. Ensuring you go in aggressive and use your bubble before popping Primal will allow you to disrupt enemies much more aggressively than otherwise. Now for Zarya, instead of waiting until you are high charged to use Graviton Surge, using it early into a fight to gather enemies and stand inside them will guarantee if using both bubbles an easy 80 charge. This could be highly preferable to gaining charge before Grav as depending on the enemy team composition it can be genuinely difficult to pull off. Now let's talk about Ramatra, and using alt as Ramatra should be with the intent to never die. If you lose your armor during your regular nemesis form gained from your shift, you simply alt again to gain armor. If for some reason you lose form from your alt, you will likely have your shift up again for nemesis, and that's three sets of armor. Make sure to steal aggression from the entire enemy team and block while in the line of sight of your supports. This will ensure you simply cannot die. Now, for Sigma, Gravitic Flux will take away 50% of any target's maximum health. Therefore, using it on the enemy tank is almost always your best bet. It's also used as a tool to hold targets in place, in the air, and in a clear view of your enemy team to shoot. If you use it on targets with the intent to let your team shoot them easily, you will almost always find value that way. But feel free to rain down on them yourself, and fly to a high ground for your own off angle for after the ultimate. But now let's move into Roadhog. And for him, know that you can use your hook and self heal while in whole hog. It can be used as a new one shot. Hooking any target while using his ultimate will almost certainly mean their demise. Otherwise, ensuring you are able to trap a target in a corner as the knockback will give them a lot of distance on you and significantly reduce your damage. But now the last tank we have Arissa. And Terra Surge one shots all 200 HP targets between 140 and 150% charge. 
and it is actually impossible for heroes such as Ana, Zenyatta, and heroes with no real mobility to get out of the radius in time before you hit that level of charge without some sort of speed boost or immortality to its damage. This means you can pretty much guarantee kills on heroes you see use their movement abilities and have wasted them, so be sure to keep an eye out and then target them. But now we can move into the DPS and what better place to start than with Tracer. Now when looking to pulse a target, whether or not you are blinking towards them beforehand or not and looking to animation cancel, throwing the pulse bomb horizontally towards their feet will mean that even if your pulse doesn't stick, it will hit the floor very close to them, still giving you a decent likelihood of killing them. Moving forward though, we have Torbjorn, and when using alt as Torb, make sure to use your overload beforehand. This will make you much safer as you can't use it while you're in alt. This will also help you with the fact that when you're using alt, you must take your time to place the splooge all over as stacking on top of each other will lose a lot of its value. Next though, we have Widowmaker. And Walls as Widow really isn't that complicated, but a big mistake we see is the refusal to use it to help your team. If you are the first to die in a fight before you used Walls and your team is looking like they can bring it back, drop the ego and use your alt. This may give them the little extra boost they need to win the fight without you. And although painful, you may thank yourself for doing so. Next though, we have Cassidy. And in a 1v1 versus a tank, we've got the perfect solution for that useless ultimate of yours. Right click, roll, right click, ultimate cancel with right click to reload, right click again, and that's a lot of damage in two seconds of a time frame and will almost certainly give you the edge against any tank with High Noon being so useless otherwise, use this at will. Next though, we have Soldier 76. Attack Visor is pretty much only useful if the enemy tank is dead or you are in such an off angle that it doesn't matter. If you're in one of these situations, you are able to walk forward around corners much more freely and off angling will help you find a pick or two unexpectedly. Ensuring one of these conditions are met when using Visor without the help of your team is key to finding value at all. Next though, we got Junkrat and Rip Tire has the potential to eliminate five players instantly but the fear you strike into the enemy team as they hear just the ultimate alone can gain massive value. As they run around like headless chickens, holding your rip tire in a third person mode inside of a room with relative safety and just letting it make noise is a pretty good use of the first 5 seconds of this ultimate. Next up though, Hanzo, and Hanzo's dragon consists of 2 dragons, and while enemies are being hit by both, they receive about 300 damage per second. As you can imagine, it would be devastating for them to be in the middle of it. It is very common due to its high damage to be used straight onto enemies without second thought. However, you actually want to use it to cut off enemy players, allow them to push through chokes and then split them up with your dragon, leaving them isolated and easily killable for your team. Next up though, we have Ash, and Bob should be thought of as a second tank, or depending on how useless your actual tank is, your only tank. Bob creates space, stalls points, and his main usage should not be to find picks, but to maintain the space required for you to find picks yourself. You can do this by using alt against a wall that would otherwise lead to cover for enemies. But now let's talk about Symmetra, and Sim's wall is a tool that should be saved for when you wish to go forward. Pushing enemies is one of the hardest things you can do as a team, and her wall fixes that completely, giving you near full safety from all enemy fire. Just make sure to be careful how you place it. Next up though, we got Sombra, and Sombra's ultimate can feel both very easy and difficult to build up so making sure it isn't wasted is crucial. When using EMP, you should try to make sure it is a fight winning usage, finding at least three or more targets and the timing of it is even more crucial. Communication with your team will help you time your EMP with your teammates engaged and using it in response to enemy ultimates is usually the way to go. Now for Bastion, his ultimate can be easily avoided unless used in rapid succession, which complicates things entirely. The ultimate is actually incredibly deadly as two shots even from the outside edge on a squishy target means certain death. That's goodbye to heroes with similar or less mobility than Soldier 76. So try to use one shot to bait the enemies to move the way you want and the other two in that direction. Next up though we have Echo, and Duplicate gives you the option to get what your team needs, not what you want to make the best play with. Sure, if you are lower ranked, duplicate whoever you can play best with the highest carry potential. However, when choosing between the entire enemy team, picking the hero with the strongest solo ultimate is going to generally be best. 
Sombra would be our number one pick if the enemies have one. Now for Genji, Dragon Blade is an extremely high skill ceiling ultimate, and the best tip we can give for it is actually a seemingly small but very significant one, which is cancelling the animation at the end of it. At the end of your Dragon Blade, the animation of putting away the blade makes it so you cannot deflect, dash, or do any damage, but this can actually be cancelled by a short wall climb. Next up, let's talk about Mei, and Mei's ultimate has the ability to completely zone off a point. But when used with the sole purpose of trapping enemies, it can be extremely difficult to pull off, as it is rather easy for them to escape. Therefore, having a specific target in mind is best as you will be able to slow them with your primary fire. And what better than to remove the enemy tank from existence? Using it on him and slowing him will certainly mean he is standing still with no way to do anything for a good 5 seconds. Moving forward though, we got Farah, and Rocket Barrage is one of the highest damage ultimates in the game, but you must be at a specific height from the floor to output the highest damage. Being nanoed or damage boosted allows you to be significantly higher in the air while being able to output over 200 damage per second than otherwise, so taking this into consideration will be key. Now for Reaper, way too many times do we see people wraithing into a death blossom. It's obvious and not that smart, so instead look to go on a flank or find a teleport even directly behind the enemies, as most of the time they won't even see it coming with how hectic Overwatch can be, this ultimate is all about its setup. And last for the DPS, we have Sojourn. Overclock grants you a new playstyle, whereas usually you look to farm charge off the enemy tank and then look to off angle, Overclock allows you to skip the first step. Make sure you have a good idea of who you wish to target before using it, and if you aren't sure, position yourself to even body shot the enemy tank 5 times in a row. This will guarantee an elimination either way. But now let's finish off strong with the supports, and to kick things off we have Ana. Now every time you have alt as Ana, you have the ability to save your inting teammates instantly. Communicating to your tank to play as aggressively as he likes as you have the nano will give him the confidence to make fight winning plays, and will also give him the health boost and damage resistance to stay alive in doing so. Next up, Kiriko, and Kitsune Rush is an amazing fight opener, and the best way to find value with it is ensuring that it is used at the start of the fight, and instantly going through as many allies as possible which means your allies will not need to find it to play in it, as they will be hit by its effects immediately. Now for Lucio, beat is usually a response to an enemy ultimate, but there is an unbelievable amount of times the moment an enemy Zarya grabs or a soldier visors, Lucio just beat as an automatic response without even a value evaluating the situation, and also checking to see if there's anyone to follow up on the enemy's ultimate, therefore wasting beat. Ensure that your beat is always needed, even limit testing how late you can use it, and this will certainly improve you as a Lucio player significantly. Next up we have Zenyatta, and Transcendence disallows you to use your Orb of Discord and Harmony while in the alt, therefore ensuring you have both of these applied to your targets will provide the maximum resources possible, with the more important of course being the Discord Orb. Now for Mercy, Valk allows you to move at light speed while flying around the map. If ever in a situation where the points need to be stalled, even if you aren't the only one alive, you can inform your team that you are able to stall as long as your alt is up, which gives your allies the freedom to play as usual instead of having to die to touch the point. Now let's talk about Baptiste, and doubling your own damage is an amazing idea, and as we support the idea of playing solo on an off angle, ensuring you have both abilities up when you initially use window, unless there is a reason otherwise, will ensure you are relatively unpressured while bursting enemies down. Next up, Moira, and now that you are able to fade within your ultimate, your ability to be a DPS Moira has never been higher and safer. Just ensure you use a damage orb before DPSing away with your ult as you won't be able to use it once in that form. Now for Life Weaver, your tree is a physical object that can completely deny entryways into objective, choke points, and essentially it's a may wall that can heal. Feel free to get creative with how you use that information, but you already can imagine the possibilities. But last up, we have Brig. And with the addition of having what is essentially a mini Ryan shield, informing a friendly long range rotating DPS such as Cassidy or Soldier you will play with them when you have alt will boost their health and have a personal bodyguard that can heal them, making them nearly unkillable during Brig's rally. Just ensure you make it to safety with time to spare as the moment you lose rally, all of your bonuses are gone and you won't be near as tanky. But let me know your favorite ultimate tip in the comments down below, and if you guys want to stay up to date with the latest and greatest Overwatch tips, tricks, and news, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. Thanks so for watching. Once again, maintain gaming, and I'll see you guys in the next one.